Okay, again, we're on the subject of a covenant of prosperity. And I might mention, you know, that as we're ministering this uh, out on the internet and across the world, that if there's people that feel like they should support this, you know, we'd welcome you to do that. It costs money for equipment and that, so uh, if you would like to send any money, uh, we could give you our address and that, and and uh, let you know that uh, the money will be used just for equipment and whatever we need to get the gospel out to you. They went well in uh, <clears throat> Deuteronomy eight and eighteen. We have our text here for the subject of the covenant of prosperity. You know there is also a uh, laws of prosperity that are established by our giving and so forth and we have to go by those laws or you know they won't work for us but the covenant of prosperity is a covenant that as God has given unto his people and we need to know that uh, there's certain requirements there in our living standard and so forth that we have to have and he lays it down in here in his word in Deuteronomy 8 and 18 again it said but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God for it is he that giveth thee power to get well so we see that it's the Lord that gives us the power to get well and what's the purpose of that that he may establish his covenant well he established his covenant so we have the finances and so forth, to, like I was mentioning earlier, to reach out and touch the world. Our job is to go out and touch people's lives Amen. and see them change, transform, and following after Jesus. The enemy, if you'll notice, has a, some great followings out there that are murdering and killing people. And we're, our message, you know, we're out there to get people set free from that thinking and that form of life and to come into a life of where you know the families are united they're blessed uh, people are working together and uh, life is good all around us amen I was talking to my neighbor just recently and and I explained to them that actually in Modesto this is the lowest income area around this whole area of uh, California we have the lowest income wow. and I think it has to do with people's thinking when we look at the word and and the Lord says that he gives us power to get well and the power to get wealth is to establish his covenant we should see the reason for that and then he in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 29 and verse 9 Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 9. It says, Therefore, that keep therefore the words of this covenant. Keep therefore the words of this covenant. And do them. In other words, you, in keeping them, you have to do them. You have to act out the word. James says we have to be doers of the word and not hearers only. Amen. And so here he said, Keep therefore. The words of this covenant and do them why that you may prosper in all that you do now I know there's people that don't believe in the prosperity message well that's shameful that you don't believe in the Word of God because I could give you at least 30 sets of scriptures that prove that God has prosperity for his people and I could give you the example of the Jewish nation but anyway you can choose how you want to believe. God said, I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose. You choose. See? And for me, I'm going to choose the Word of God. And the Word of God brings blessings. I can't find any place in the Word of God where God wants us to diminish and wants us to be uh, beat down. He wants us to be a living example living as kings on this earth, you know, and examples to the whole world 
that Jesus is the Lord of Lords and the King yes. of Kings. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Now, in Joshua 1 and 8, God gave Joshua with some information here. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. It says, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. It's talking about the Bible, right? Joshua 1 and 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. And so you need to be meditating in the word of God all the time. You need to be living in the word of God. That needs to be your life. That's what God's telling Joshua, and that's what he's telling us. Then he says, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. There's that do word again. Right? That means we're going to have to do the word. You can't just yeah. read the word and That's forget right. the word. You have to read the word, remember the word, and act out the word. Right? right? That you may do according to all that is written therein. And what's the result of that? For then thou shalt make thy we prosperous. Wow. If we do the word, we're going to make our way prosper. And then thou shalt have good success. Well, who doesn't want to have good success? And why wouldn't God want everybody to have good success? I believe that God believed in good success. Amen. I believe that God believed in prosperity. Yes, he does. You know? And so we need to know that these things belong to us. Now, I want to bring you to the book of Ezra. Now, Ezra, you'll find Ezra back just before you get to the book of Psalms. It's probably a book you haven't been into, maybe never. <laughs> or if you have, you went past it pretty quick. But Ezra chapter 1, just go to Ezra chapter 1, and... Uh, We've talked about prosperity beginning with Abraham and Isaac was prosperous. Jacob was prosperous. Joseph said he was a prosperous man. You know, uh, when we get to Moses, we find out that Moses and the children of Israel uh, came out of Egypt with silver and with gold. <laughs> There was not one feeble person among their tribes. Nothing like what Hollywood shows. See? And I don't know why Hollywood wouldn't think prosperous, but, you know, when it comes to the Bible, I guess they don't. <laughs> but anyway, they came out with silver and gold, not one feeble person among their tribes. You know? And so, then we got into, uh, you know, King Saul. They wanted a king. The children of Israel wanted a king. And uh, God didn't want them to have a king, but they wanted a king like every other nation. So he said, okay. So he gave them Saul. Turned out Saul started out really good, ended up really bad. <laughs> bad, bad, bad. <laughs> you know? And then after him, God says, I have a man that's after my own heart. And he sent Samuel over and he anointed David. And David became the king. Mm -hmm. Now, both... Uh, Saul and David reigned for 40 years. And then uh, David's son Solomon becomes the king. He's the third king of Israel, right? Mm -hmm. And you can't get any richer than Solomon, you know. <laughs> I mean, no one knows how rich Solomon was. But Jesus said <laughs> that when he came, he said, a greater than Solomon is here. So when you receive Jesus, you're receiving more riches than Solomon had. Got that? Yeah. Okay. So anyway, we have Solomon. Solomon starts out really good, you know. Huh. He goes bad, 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 bad. Naughty, naughty, naughty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. 700 wives, 300 concubines. Mm -hmm. You know, and all the things that God told him he, uh, he shouldn't uh, have been, you know, overabundant. He did. Mm -hmm. And so then his son takes over, and he was a mess because he was already a brat from being around mm -hmm. the wrong teaching. You got that? <laughs> See, so then uh, because of the way Solomon did, you know, God divided the kingdom, 
and one part was Israel and one part was Judah. Then we have all of these kings. We've talked about all of these different kings, 43 kings, and, and I've mentioned it's very interesting that the uh, uh, President Bush was uh, president number 43, you know, and uh, so they had 43 kings, and out of the 43 kings, eight were considered good, mm -hmm. and one of them was questionable, <laughs> but anyway, they were considered good, but eight out of 43, that's all that were good. I haven't really studied the president to see how many of them came out good, <laughs> you know, but it seems like that we're in the same kind of thing as Israel was. We're declining. We're not uh, escalating in prosperity. It seems like we're always having a recession or some kind of problem with finance. Mm -hmm. You know, well, but if we follow God, you know, we wouldn't have that problem That's because right. he tells us in his word, you know, if we would read his word and do the word, you know, that we prosper in all that we do. Well. Uh, I think individually that we can do that, and if the rest of the people want to get in on it, you know, they can. Now, here we have Ezra, and during the time of Ezra, we passed through all the 43 kings, and now, because they were so bad, uh, they ended up in captivity for 70 years. And so, during the time of Ezra, they're coming out of captivity. They're basically just barely coming out of captivity. We covered uh, uh, Esther and Mordecai who were operating during the time of captivity. We see that, you know, they were trying to wipe out Mordecai, trying to wipe out all the Jewish nation. One bad guy by the name of Haman uh, under King Ahasuerus. And, but anyway, uh, God anyway brought Esther in, and she became the new queen. And between her and Mordecai, well, everything got taken care of because God worked through them, saved the Jewish nation, and blessed Mordecai and exalted them into a high position. We saw that uh, the Hebrew children, the three Hebrew children, you know, uh, the king was wanting them to bow down to some goofy image. They said, no, we're not bowing down to anything but God. Uh -huh. That's it. See? Okay, said, so, boy, he got really upset about that. Heated up his furnace seven times hotter and it should be heated and tossed those guys in the furnace. But when he looked in the furnace, it said he was astonished. Some people think that word means astonished. No, astonished means he was petrified. Mm -hmm. He was petrified of what he saw in that furnace. Because he saw four men walking around in a furnace that was heated seven times hotter than it normally was heated to burn people up, mm -hmm. like the Nazis did, right? Mm -hmm. And so he says, uh, hey, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you come out of there. Mm -hmm. So out they came, you know, it said they wouldn't even smell smoke on yeah. Nothing. And that made a big impression. Change the king's word, you know. They got promoted. Well, the next thing that we see is Daniel. Daniel's rising higher and higher in the kingdom, and all these guys get jealous over Daniel, and they decide, well, they're going to plot something. They went to the king, got him to sign a decree, saying, well, uh, if anybody bows down to any one but you, O king, for the next 30 days, we're, uh, he's going to be thrown into the lion's den. So the king, not thinking, because Daniel was one of his favorite people, He's not thinking. He signs this decree. And, of course, Daniel goes and opens up his windows to make sure they hear him <laughs> and prays three times a day to the God in Israel. And uh, so they accuse him before the king and said, Now, king, you signed this. It can't be changed. So we're going to have to put Daniel in the lion's den. Mm -hmm. And so what happened is the king uh, went into fasting, turned his television off, <laughs> Didn't have television that night. No entertainment, you know, and uh, he fasted all night. And he comes running out to the lion's den the next morning and says, Oh, Daniel, was your God able to keep you? He said, Oh, King, live forever. Hmm. You know, the the Lord has sent his angels and they shut the lion's mouth. Mm -hmm. We left it right there. You know, people say, Well, those lions were tame. Hmm. But no, we didn't leave it right there. The people that accused Daniel, the king said, now you people, you're in trouble. 
So he tossed them, their wives, and their children into the lion's den. And it said, just as soon as they hit the bottom of that den, the lions had mastery on them. Yep. Meaning that they were ferocious and they were uh, hungry. Mm -hmm. See? And so we see that those weren't tame lions. Right. Now, some people will come up with that, you know? Yep. But anyway, in all of these things, uh, there was Daniel, and Daniel was promoted higher and higher and higher, right in the middle of all of this captivity. <clears throat> see? And so you see, it doesn't matter how bad it gets around you. God can promote you right in the middle of everything that's going on if you trust him. So just spend your time reading the Bible and trusting God. Now, again, like I said, we have Ezra here. In the first verse of Ezra chapter 1, it said, Now the first year, uh, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. The Lord steered up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he might make a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it into writing, saying, Well, here God is steering up a heathen king. Uh, you know, this, this king here is... Uh, in Persia, does everybody know where Persia is? Well, that's Iran. Oh, that's who we're dealing with right now. Oh, that's right. See, in Persia, see, this king was raised up by God, and it said, Thus saith the king, in verse 2, of, uh, Thus saith the king of Persia, The Lord God of heaven, right, mm -hmm. hath given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and it charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judea, or Judah. Now, here's the thing. He steered up this king to do this, right? And verse 3 says, Who is there among you of all his people? Got this? All his people, right? Who, who is there among you of all his people? His God be with them, and let them go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord, God of Israel. He is the God. Mm -hmm. I said, he said, he is the God, yeah. right? Which is in Jerusalem, right? Mm -hmm. So here, they're going up to Jerusalem. Now, in Isaiah 44 and 28, I'm just going to give this information to you. This is 200 years before this takes place. I said 200 years before this particular thing takes place, Isaiah the prophet prophesied something. And Isaiah prophesied, Cyrus, he is my shepherd. Listen to this. He is my shepherd and shall perform all my pleasure, even saying to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be built. You got that? Thou shalt be built, and to the temple thy foundation shall be laid. Now, here's Cyrus, uh, you know, this king, 200 years later, obeying the word of the prophet. Now, I want to just read Isaiah 45 and 13. Isaiah 45 and 13. Very quickly here. Isaiah 45 and verse 13. <clears throat> Actually, let me read verse 11 through 13. It said, Thus saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, and his Maker, ask me of things to come concerning my son, and concerning the work of my hands, command ye me. Woo! That's that's powerful, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Verse 12. I have made the earth and created man upon it. I, even my hands, have stretched out the heaven, and all their hosts have I commanded. In other words, God said, I've commanded to put everything into its place, right? Now look at verse 13. I have raised him up in righteousness. I will direct all his ways. He shall build my city. And he shall let go my captive, not for price nor reward, saith the Lord of hosts. He's talking about Cyrus here. Mm -hmm. 
I said, he's talking about Cyrus. And, and he's saying all what he's going to do. He says, he, he's going to raise this king up in righteousness. The heathen king, a Persian king, an Iranian king. <laughs> he's going to raise him up in righteousness, and I will direct all his way. He's going to direct his way, right? And he shall build my city, and he shall let go my captive. Right? Not for price, nor reward, saith the Lord of hosts. In other words, uh, they're not going to be bought out of they're going to be set free. Right? Amen. Now, look at verse Ezra, chapter 1, verse 4. It said, Whosoever uh, remaineth in any place where he sojourneth, <clears throat> that word sojourneth, actually it means that you're in a place where you're waiting for information to what you're going to do next. Okay? So, and uh, whosoever remaineth in any place where he sojourneth, <clears throat> let the men of his place help him with silver and with gold and with goods and with beef, beside, listen to this, the free will offering. The free will offering for the house of God that is in Jerusalem. He gives a command. For all the heathen people around there, because they've all taken over Jerusalem, there's just a few Jewish people left in the land. The rest of them were all in Babylon and ended up in Persia, or the same area, but uh, under the Persian power, because the Persians overtook the Babylonians. <laughs> okay? And, you know, Daniel lived through uh, two of those kings and prospered under both of them. Mm -hmm. But here, he's sending them back at the direction of God, and he's sending them back with everything they need. He said, uh, let the men of this place help him with silver and with gold. In other words, give them some money. Give them some finance, right? And with goods. In other words, food or whatever product or, or material, whatever they need. With beef, you know. Uh, we translate that into today, you know, it would be like trucks, <laughs> you know, that are hauling stuff, beside the free will offering. In other words, these people, heathen people are going to give out the free will offering and, and for, uh, for the house of God that is in Jerusalem, right? So, uh, again, this is in agreement with Deuteronomy 29 and 9, where it said, keep therefore the words of this covenant and do them that you may prosper in all that you do. Apparently, this king is obeying God, even though we would consider him a heathen king. Well, the Jews wouldn't ever consider us in on what's going on. You know, but we're the church. Now, we've come out of obscurity and since that they, you know, they never uh, accepted uh what Jesus did, you know, and so forth. They don't. They haven't even accepted him as the Messiah. Yeah, they will mm -hmm. accept him as the Messiah, but they missed it. <laughs> See, meanwhile, in the middle of all that, the church came, right? And we're the church. We're those heathens that came, you know. <laughs> and believe me, we've lived. Some of us have lived like heathens, haven't we? I mean, we'd have to, you know, admit that. Uh, we haven't done everything exactly the way that God wants us to do or listen to God the way that he wants us to listen. Now in Ezra 1 and 5 it said, Then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and the Levites uh, with all them whose spirit God had raised, listen to that, whose spirit who God had raised. Like that? We don't realize how much God is involved in people's lives. And to go up to build the house of the Lord, which is in Jerusalem. So here, he steered up their spirits to go do this. And it said, and all they that were about them strengthened their hands, watch it, with vessels of silver, with gold, with good, with bee, and with precious things. Not that? Beside all that was willingly offered beside all that that was willingly offered. In other words, these people weren't grudgingly giving. That's right. 
Some Christians are grudgingly giving. Mm -hmm. God said, I, I love cheerful givers. Mm -hmm. Right? Can't be a cheerful giver, just keep your money. Mm -hmm. Now, verse 7. Also, Cyrus the king brought forth the vessels. Listen. I mean, you need to listen to this. Cyrus brought forth, Cyrus the king brought forth the vessels of the house of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar had brought forth out of Jerusalem, and had put them in the house of his gods. Well, see, the Persian, he overtook the Babylonians, so he got all of the booty, right? <laughs> he got all the stuff. Now, verse 8, it says, Even those did Cyrus, king of Persia, bring forth by the hand of uh, Mithridath, the treasurer, and numbered them under Shebazer, the prince of Judah, okay? So I'm pronouncing that right. And th and this is the number of them, 30 chargers of gold, a thousand chargers of silver, nine and twenty-nine, 30 basins of gold, silver, basins of, uh, of a second sort, 410, and other vessels, a thousand. A thousand. <laughs> Got that? All the vessels of gold and of silver, were 504,000. All these did uh, Shebazer bring up with them of the captivity that were brought up from Babylon unto Jerusalem. Now, Cyrus returned everything that the king of Babylon took away from the kings of Israel mm -hmm. because they were not that. They normally, normally, they would melt all this stuff down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See? Why would they melt it down? Because they want to make it into their own little gods. Mm -hmm. See? But you know what? God protected that. He stopped all of that. And so this was all kept in storage at the cost of the Babylonian Empire, the cost of the Persian Empire. For 70 years, God had it kept in storage. And uh, there was no storage cost. <laughs> 70 years, no storage cost. You know, no damage. No damage. See? Here they come. Right? So what I'm trying to say is, even during all the times that Israel was in trouble, even just like America is in trouble today, even during all those times, there were people that rose right up out of that dust yes. and all of those ashes and all of that burning and all that bad stuff, you know, and became prosperous. Mm -hmm. See, when they became prosperous, it caused other people to become prosperous. See, I was talking to my neighbor across the street, like I said, you know, and I was just mentioning the fact that, uh, again, you know, that how Stanislaus County is the, you know, lowest paid county in the state of California. <laughs> It's amazing. But anyway, I said, you know, we believe in what we call the prosperity magic. But I said, most of the church, I said, you know, they give you this. <laughs> and they don't believe in it. Shame on them. You know, they're rejecting the blessings of God. Mm -hmm. These blessings begin all the way with Abraham. And God said, I'm going to bless you, Abraham, and I'm going to make you a blessing. Mm -hmm. See? And then he says to us in Galatians 3.29, if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to that promise. Amen. And if you read Galatians chapter 3, it tells us that we've been blessed with faithful Abraham. Yes. If, all I can say is I don't think the people are reading their Bible. That's right. They need to start reading their Bible. Now, me, you know, I go through the New Testament every six days. And I don't know how many times a year I do that five or six times and then I go through the whole Bible. But we just have to put the Word of God on the inside of us. Then we'll understand what God's doing. I see more and more and more as I read the Bible. And the Bible says, you know, to those that have, more will be given. And those that have not, it will be taken away that which they seem to have. Amen? So we need to know that God's into the adding and multiplying business, right? He wants us to be blessed, right? Now, 
Like I said, there's laws of prosperity that govern our lives. We have to obey those laws. Those laws are in the area of giving. You know, the Bible says, If we give, it shall be given unto us. Good men shall press down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into our bosom. And I can't tell you how blessed we are. I can, it's amazing. <laughs> you know, we, we needed uh, equipment, and somebody just invites us to a place, and, and the offering is over $2,000, so we come back and buy all the equipment. <laughs> mm-hmm. I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know? Well, we realized we needed some more equipment. Somebody else invites us, and we go, and we come back with another big bundle of money and buy the rest of the equipment. See? Anyway, thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. Okay, so, so, so there's laws of prosperity that govern our life. But there's a covenant of prosperity that belongs to the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I might say here, Everything in the Bible has great significance. For, for instance, when the Bible uh, says uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, each one of those names means something. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, each one of our names means something. Most of the time, we're named after one of our relatives. <laughs> you know, at least they slip a, the second name or something in there, you know, to let us know that we belong to that relative, right? But, Jesus' names were quite significant in the sense that Lord means provider, like landlord. Mm. See? And so uh, people uh, make Jesus their Savior. In other words, they'll receive Jesus as their Savior, but they never really receive him as their healer or they never receive him as their provider. Mm. See? He's all of those things. Yeah. And the word Jesus means Savior, right? Christ means anointed. And so he is the one who anoints us, and he sent the Holy Spirit to do that. Now, I just want to give you a little thought, because I was thinking about this. You remember uh, when the Romans came and they took over Israel, they burned the temple. Well, during the burning of the temple, you know, a lot of gold was on the walls inside the temple. And so when they burned that temple, all of that gold or whatever it was, uh, precious metal and everything, melted either into the cracks of the walls or down into the floor. See? You remember that Jesus said not one stone was going to be left in that temple because, again, Israel was being naughty again. It's not Israel that's naughty today. It's the church. Yeah. Uh, we know Israel, you know, has some corrections that need to be made. But the church, we need to get straightened out. Now, here's the thing. They burned the temple. All of this gold and stuff went down in the cracks. So what did they do? They took that temple apart, stone by stone, and got every bit of that gold and silver out of it. That's why they took it apart. Well, Jesus had prophesied that not one stone was going to be left upon another. And if things today are not, uh, you know, done and put together by the Lord, Mm -hmm. you can know for sure that it won't stand. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible tells us, you know, that what we do is going to be judged whether it is precious, metal, like gold, gold, Represents deity. Okay. Silver represents redemption. Brass. Well, what does brass represent? Brass re- represents uh, judgment. What does iron represent? Bondage. Okay. And so when you see those things in the Bible, they have a uh, great representation in those words. <clears throat> and we need to know that. When when you go down to the hay and the stubble, uh, that stuff's all going to be burned up. That's why it's eye for bondage. It's not going to it's not going to stand the test, is it? Okay. So we need to know that none of that's going to be able to stand. And so how are we going to walk? Well, again, Deuteronomy twenty nine and nine said, "Keep therefore the words of this covenant." 
Keep, therefore, the words of this covenant. Why are the words of this covenant? When we get into the New Testament, and we'll start that next week, but when we get into the New Testament, we're going to find out that the covenant that we keep is walking in love. Yeah. We have to love God with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our being, and love our neighbor as ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it's hard to love your neighbor, especially if you have a conflict with your neighbor. Mm -hmm. You know, we had a conflict one time with a neighbor, you know, but I resolved that and, and making sure that I took care of that problem to make sure that uh, my neighbor wasn't at odds with me. And we're supposed to do that. We're supposed to make amends, anything we can to make peace on this earth. Right. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. <clears throat> He lives on the inside of us. He wants us to make peace with them. He does not want us to conform to them. That's right. He wants us to make peace with them. And he wants us to help them to see that he's a merciful God. So again, it says, keep therefore the words of this covenant and do them that you may prosper in all that you do. How much that you do? All. So some people only want partial prosperity. Really? And I've talked to people, you know, several times I've talked to people and said, you know, I don't know what it is. I think it's just a message that God has allowed us to have. And I know a lot of people have the same message. See? But when people hang around us, they prosper. And when they separate from us, I notice that their prosperity just either stays where they were or diminishes. I saw that happen mm -hmm. with people. See? So people can make a decision what they want to do. When when we uh I want to just give you one scripture and then I'm gonna close, and that's found in Psalms. Because I feel like that this scripture needs to be added before we go into the New Testament. Look at uh look with me, if you will, to Psalms chapter one. Psalm chapter 1. Psalm chapter 1, beginning with verse 1. It says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But what did it say? Verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. In other words, in the word of God. And in his law, or in his word, doth he meditate day and night. There that is again. Mm. Meditating day and night. See? Yeah. Now, I used to watch a lot of television. But I don't watch much television anymore. Mm. I meditate day and night. You know, my wife says, you know, well, aren't you going to talk to me? <laughs> Well, I will, honey, I will, you know. <coughs> well, I haven't seen you for days. You've been locked up in your office. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, not all that bad, but, you know, she's saying that I'm kind of overdoing there, but you can't overdo the Word of God. But the thing is, I just like to spend a lot of time in the Word because it's my responsibility to give out truth. Mm -hmm. And I can't give out truth if I'm thinking on something that's not true. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So here it says, uh, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and the law doth he meditate day and night. And then verse 3 says, And he shall be, here's the results. Here's the results, see. Eh? And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Not one river, rivers. Oh, rivers. Yeah. rivers. You know, the Holy Spirit is depicted as rivers of living water. Amen. Rivers of living water. See, that's what that's who I connect with. I spend time reading my Bible and praying in tongues. Mm -hmm. Reading my Bible and praying in tongues. Amen. Reading my Bible and praying in tongues. Mm -hmm. Now, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. So there's seasons when we bring things forth. His leaf also shall not wither. Now the leaf protects the fruit. You know? And then it said, and whatsoever he doeth, Shall prosper. Do it. E T H means continue to do. Well, some people say, I don't like that E T H. Well, that's just too bad. 
<laughs> see, because it means something, and if you don't learn what it means, you see, you might think that God thinks you only have to do it once in your whole lifetime, and then you're just going to prosper the rest of your life. No, no, no. It's a way of life. It's a way of life. See? It says, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. In other words, whoever he, whatever he continues yeah. to do based on God's word, he's going to prosper in that area. Amen. Amen. And so we're going to get back into this. Well, like I said, this next week we're going to get into the New Testament just to connect the New Testament with uh, the Christians connected with Abraham's blessing and that covenant of prosperity. Amen.